Okay, body time. If you missed part one in this series where I covered how to make the guitar neck, then I have left you a link to that video down in the description so that you can get caught up. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the process on making the guitar body and then joining the two components together. So let's get started. Body time. Crimson Guitar makes a ton of custom guitars. And one of their body styles is called the Descendant. That's the shape that I went with for mine. I intentionally picked out a piece of wood with a crack running through it so that I could incorporate bow ties into the design. This is a functional woodworking method that spans over a crack to stabilize it and prevent it from separating further. After tracing on my body shape, I roughly figured out where I could place the bow ties and how large they could be without interfering with any of the guitar components, but still in positions to do their job of holding together the crack. Okay, let's do it, gentlemen. Cool, it's gonna be so good. Once the direction and general size was sorted, I drew it out on a piece of roasted sycamore, which is the same wood as the neck of my guitar. Then cut it out over at the bandsaw. Next, I spent a good bit of time using a file and getting this one bow tie as perfect as possible because the plan was to use it as a template for my other two bow ties that would be needed. I stuck the bow tie in the bench vise, then used a file to flatten each side straight and square, using a small machine square to check my progress. When held up on the edge, I could easily see height spots that I could mark and then remove. After getting it perfect, I temporarily attached it to a scrap piece of wood, which will act as a handle to keep my hands safely out of the way when I take these small parts to the router. Then I stuck on another bow tie that I cut out to be just slightly oversized on all sides. This will be my second bow tie that I'll make identical to the first using a flush trim bit in the router table. And you can see in this shot just how difficult handling these parts would be at the table without some sort of handle. After making one copy, I peeled it off, then used some more masking tape and CA glue to stick on the other one to make a third. I was a little bit worried about the roasted sycamore bow ties blending in too much to the light alder body. So Chris suggested outlining it in stained black holly. Yes, please. This was a time consuming step, but definitely worth it in my opinion. I would use a scalpel to cut a length of holly just slightly oversized, then attach it using some CA glue. What's up? Black stained holly. That's Ooh. what's up. Yeah. It's gonna be a black tie affair. Oh, <laughs> and this is something I love about working with other people. These little nuggets of information or different ways of thinking. They are gold to me. I mean, I never would have thought about outlining them or putting on a temporary handle or even just realizing how versatile CA glue is. Oh yes, and the tea. That is something I really enjoyed picking up <laughs> while over in the UK. I used some snips to cut down the bulk of overhanging holly, then a machinist block, which is perfectly flat, to sand flush. Now to cut in the recesses into the body for these bow ties to be inserted into. Chris suggested I spend the time making one template from MDF that would allow me to use a router to cut all three in pretty quickly. So I stuck one of my bow ties on a scrap, scribed around it with a scalpel, used a Forstner bed in the drill press to remove the bulk of material from the center, and then cleaned up the perimeter with a chisel. Okay, and with that done, now I can cut them into the body. I first placed my completed bow ties on my body in the position I wanted them. I tried to make them all at the same angle and of course also made double sure they weren't gonna be placed where they would interfere with any of the electronics that would be added later on. I traced around them with the pencil one by one, then stuck my template in place with masking tape and CA glue. Oh my gosh, don't let me mess up, okay? It'll be fine. From here, it was the same process as it was with making the template. Removing the bulk of wood from the center of the bow ties with a Forstner bit over at the drill press. A flush trim bit in the router is next, which removes all of the wood to make the cavity identical to my template, other than the sharp corners, which the round bit can't do. So next, a chisel is used to square these corners off and complete one bow tie. Even though this made up an entire day's worth of work, I love it. I love having a guitar that almost pays homage to the woodworking side of it. Before inserting the bow ties in the body, I quickly used a chisel to cut the edges of the bottom side off all of the edges. And this small little chamfer will make inserting them in just a little bit easier. All right, Guru. 
To pop them in, I applied a good amount of wood glue to the bottom of the cavities as well as all of the side walls. Then lined the bow tie up and hammered it down until it seated all of the way. Hello, bow tie. You can see that I used a scrap piece of wood that spans the entire bow tie and try to knock it in evenly. You can also see Tritons as well as Crimson's videographers here. Don't forget that both have put out videos over on their channels of this experience. I missed it. You missed, you missed it. Uh, the grand event. I'll have to watch the video, I guess. <laughs> Subscribe and see more. Or whatever. <laughs> Once all the bow ties were seated, I clamped three boards spanning the distance of the body over each bow tie to sit for a bit until cured. With the detail of the bow ties done, I moved on to the actual bodywork. So if you don't have bow ties, this would be your starting point. I already have my body outline tray, so I took it over to the bandsaw and cut it out. Just cutting right outside of the line at this point. Oh, and everybody say hello to Matt. <laughs> Next, I ran the bottom of the body over a jointer to get it nice and flat, and then ran it through the thickness planner to get the top to match it. Now I could go to the disc sander and carefully work right up to my lines and get the shape of the body perfect. Oh my gosh, I love how that sycamore bow tie with black stain holly pops, but also blends in so well with the coloring of the alder and its crack. The disc sander can take care of all of the convex curves, then the spindle sander was used to clean up all of the concave curves. I'll come back later to do more shaping on the body, but for now we moved on to a pretty important step, which was cutting in a cavity or a pocket for the neck to later be attached to the body. It's pretty important that the neck be attached straight. To ensure we were doing this, I first found center of the body and of the neck, then made some pencil mark as references to line up the two. The next step was to make a template, for lack of a better word, for cutting the pocket to hold the neck to the body. We did this by projecting out the two lines of the neck by butting a straight edge up to either side and tracing the inside face. This line indicates where a straight piece of scrap needs to temporarily be attached to the body. This will make up the left and right guide for the router in the next step. Then before unclamping, another scrap is placed against the back of the neck which will be the router's guide to dictate the depth of the pocket. If that doesn't make sense, it should help here with the visual. See, I used that router and the flush trim bit to carve out this pocket. That bearing on the flush trim bit is hitting those guides I set up and cutting everything out inside of them. Now, whenever I remove the guides, you can see that I have a very nicely fitting spot for the neck of my guitar to later be glued into. We still needed to do a few things to the body though, so we held off gluing the neck in place just for the meantime. Attaching the bridge was the first thing on the list to do. This is where the strings will later pop through before heading up to the headstock of the guitar. After making a few guidelines with the protractor and setting it in place, I used an awl to mark the location of each hole. This is to keep the drill bit from wandering around when drilling it to size in the next step. After each one was marked, I used a drill press to punch these holes nice and straight. Next was to cut in the cavities for the two pickups. These have a specific placement, but since their location was indicated on the template I used in the first step, I was able to place them so that they straddled that one bow tie. Also, if you're interested in guitar making, Crimson has tons of templates and tools like these to make your job easier. I hogged away the majority of the wood with a Forstner bit, then finished it off with a router. I repeated the process with the body template of mine as well, to cut out those two large cavities in the back of the body that will later hold the electronics. For these two back cavities, two lids needed to be made in order to cap them off. I stuck with my roasted sycamore for these parts, and after doing a rough cut over at the bandsaw, I used the disc sander to refine the shape. These need to be a pretty good fit because if there are any gaps, you will always be able to see them. So while I did a lot of the tuning with the disc sander, after getting it close, I moved back to the workbench and Chris stuck a piece of sandpaper to a straight edge so that I could whittle away at the high spots and just kind of sneak up slowly on them until both of these teardrop caps fit perfectly. I think that's a pretty good tip too. Alrighty, quick tea break, and then it was time to drill a hole for the output jack, which I thought was a pretty serious moment, but apparently I was the only one. Cremona. 
You want to go pretty perpendicular to the surface. I'm serious, Matt. <laughs> this, is, this is serious time. Do you not see that the operation happening? You're trying to eat my arm? Uh, did you check the... Matthew? <laughs> Away from me. <laughs> well, that's clear. Cool. Oh, chamfer. Ooh. Oh. Oh, yeah. And at some point before this, I put a chamfer around the entire body. I don't seem to have any footage of it, so sorry about that. Uh, Alright, time to drill more holes. A few holes are needed to connect the different cavities to each other so that when we run the wire, they can feed from one section to the other. Even though punching holes in my beautiful new body wasn't my favorite, I don't think any of them were particularly scary. At least nothing like punching into the truss rod cavity in the last video. And I believe that's it for the body. We really wanted to get our necks glued up before we called it a night, so we spent a good amount of time doing all of the finish sanding. Starting off with the Palm RS and running through the grits on the large flat surfaces. Then switching over to sandpaper to get the inside edges as well as the chamfer. Face clamp. Chin clamp. Chin clamp. It's not quite a face clamp. Yeah. Okay, let's glue the neck into place, shall we? Oh, I'm gonna glue on the neck, man. For real? I mean, ask Chris, but yeah, I think for real, for real. So, let's get some glue in that face. Uh, we want to cover the surface, we still want to be able to see the grain through. <laughs> How's that? Yep, yeah, good. Put in the neck? Yes. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like this was a huge moment. I mean, both components, the neck and the body, had taken so much time to get to this point. But there was really nothing to be nervous about as this operation to join the two was really simple. Before calling it a night, I got mine in clamps, Matt got his, and Ben even got his in clamps. We let that sit up overnight and then unclamp them in the morning to admire them as full guitars for the first time. Oh, is this beautiful or what? I'm so happy with it. Ding. Ding. Oh, that's the greatest shape I've ever seen. Eh? Okay, and at this point, the guitars are ready for finish. Crimson actually has an in-house spray finisher, so Matt and I picked out the type of finish we wanted. While Josh took the guitars to apply the finish, we went off with Triton Tools to explore the local sawmill lumberyard called Yandles, which I highly recommend if you're ever in the Somerset area. By the time we got back, the guitars weren't only coated, but they were also dry. Oh, and my, 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 I know I'm biased, but I am absolutely in love with this guitar. The bow ties, the flame in the neck, the mother of pearl inlay against that ebony. Oh, I love it. Okay, okay, enough gawking. Let's finish her off. Up to this point, I have been pretty strict about people keeping their hands off and letting me do my own work on my own guitar. But Matt and I were determined to finish the guitars before calling it a night. And by the way, it was already midnight at this point. So I welcome the help of James and Chris to quickly throw in the electronics, route the wires, attach the tuning and volume knobs, string and tune the guitar, attach the two pickups, then flip it over and mount the two back plates. Doing great, Matt. If I had been drifting before, I was wide awake at this point. After four days of extreme fun, but detailed work, I finally got to plug in my guitar and make some noise with her. Oh my goodness. What do I do, Guru? Can I put my foot on the amp like a real rock and roller? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now what? Hold on, I gotta do the thing. Right here and here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me another chord. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. I like A much better than E minor. Hey, who knows how to play the guitar? I didn't yet know how to play the guitar, so after doing a few strums, I'd pass it around for the others to have a go. This is exciting. Hey Josh, 
gosh, let's hear something now. I cannot express how amazing this experience was and it has a full recommendation from me if you're thinking about taking a class. If you're a maker but not a guitarist, just like Matt and I, I still recommend it as there's just so much to learn. Then if you're a guitarist but not a maker, I still recommend it because the luthiers at Crimson can be as hands-on or off as your skill level needs them to be. I learned so much. I laughed more in that one week than I have all year, I think, and I have this amazing handcrafted guitar that I'll keep for the rest of my life. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. We're going to wrap it up. Um, be sure to follow Crimson Guitar on YouTube, Matt Cremona, and Triton Tools because all of us have different versions of the story of, of the awesomeness that happened this week. So leave me your comments down below and rock on. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> See if I can wave on my Hold on. Got to move the pick out of my hand. <laughs> wave, wave the whole guitar. Wave the whole. No, y'all do that. I'll do my standard. <laughs> Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Norboard. Norboard has launched a national-wide campaign called Become a Framer to help the construction industry get more young Americans interested in becoming a framer. Framers are carpenters, and they're the ones who build the framework of a structure, which is by far one of my favorite things. And due to a national shortage of framers, the great pay is only rising for these positions. So if college and instead doesn't seem to be for you, and you're looking for a path that can start paying out right away, is outdoors active, and can lead to to a self-employed career, then check out becomeaframer.com slash April Wilkerson. There are training and apprenticeships, some even for free, where you can start getting paid right away while being trained in a rewarding career that will never go away. Dirty hands, but clean money. That's the path that I've chosen. So again, go to becomeaframer.com slash April Wilkerson to learn more about becoming a framer. And you can enter to win a Home Depot gift card and an S-Wing Pro framing hammer. Mm -hmm.